91. Is that so? Yes. You're 92. Be that as it may. Let it be. No, it's important getting things. It doesn't matter. Well, it does to me. I'm 91. Okay. You're 92. I know because he says you're exactly 30 years older than I am. I know how old I am because I know how old you are. If you ever forget how old you are, just ask me how old I am, and then you'll know. Oh, he said that a lot. What if he's wrong? What? What if he's wrong? What if he isn't 30 years younger than you are? Don't be silly. How? You don't even think he'd know how old he is. No, I mean, what if he's wrong about how old you are? Well, how couldn't he be 30 years younger than I am if I'm 30 years older than he is? He, he said it over and over, every time he comes. Well, what day is it? It's Wednesday. You see? Well, one of you might be wrong, and it might not be him. He. Yes, I know. Don't be stupid. What is it? What day is it? It's Wednesday. No. No what? No, it isn't. OK. What day do you think it is? What day do I? Why? Why, it's today, of course. What day do you think it is? Oh, <laughs> it's on, girl. Dumb answer. Don't you talk to me that way. Well, I'm sorry. You can't talk to me that way. I pay you, don't I? In a way. What? Indirectly. You pay someone who pays me. Well, there, okay, you see, I pay you. You can't talk to me that way. Besides. Maybe these things get important. 
Why can't I be nice? You made it that time. And so it goes. Not always. Huh? In the morning, she wets. A kind of greeting to the day, I suppose. Never at night, but as she wakes. A good morning to the morning. Huh? <sighs> something to something. Put a diaper on her. Won't have it. I've tried, but she won't have it. Rubber sheets? Won't have it. Get her up, put her in the chair, and she does the other. Get her up, give, a, give her a cup of coffee. Place her in the chair, give her a cup of coffee, and place your bets. What chair? Oh, God, this chair? <laughs> you got it. Ugh, don't worry. It must be awful. For whom? For her. You're paid. I mean, it's probably awful for you, too, but you're paid. As she never ceases to inform me, and you. Let's begin to lose it. The loss of control, the, the loss of dignity. Oh, stop it. It's downhill from 16 on for all of us. Well, yes. Oh, what are you, 20 something? Haven't you figured it out yet? You take the deep breath in, and you let it out. The first one you take, you're hanging upside down, and they slap you into it. The last one, the last one, you let it all out. And that's it. You start and you stop. Oh, don't be so soft. I'd like to see children learn it. Have a six year old say, I'm dying, and know what it means. You're horrible. Start them in young. Make them aware from the minute that they're alive that they only got a little bit of time. Awful. Oh, grow up. Do you know it? Do you know you're dying? Well, yes. Grow up. A person could die and then nobody care. Done already. A person could fall down and break something. Nobody care. Well, let me help you. Oh, oh, no, don't you touch me. A person could die and nobody care. Who is this person? A person could do this. A person. It's a figure of speech. No. Really? So they tell me. Oh, oh, hold on to me. Do, do you want me to fall? Do you want me to fall? Yes, I want you to fall and break into ten pieces. Or five or seven. Where's my chair gone to? Who's got my chair? Oh, goodness, where has her chair gone to? Somebody must have taken her chair. Who's got my chair? I am so sorry. Your Majesty. All right, here we go. Do you want your pillows? Shall I fetch you your pillows? Fetch your pillows! Oh, I want to sit down. Yes, yes, here we go. Uh, which pillow? Are you comfortable? Do you want your pillow? Oh, of course I'm not comfortable. Of course I want my pillows. I, I don't, I don't know which one. Oh, it's two, actually. One for her back and one for the arm. All right, here we lean forward. That a girl. Who oh, has a pillow? Oh, right here. There. All comfy. All comfy. He never stays. 
I'll fix him. I'll fix all of them. They all think they can treat me like this. They all think they can get away with anything. I'll fix you. I'll fix you all. Is it always like this? No. It's often very pleasant. Hmm. Everybody wants something. Because nobody doesn't want something. My mother taught me that. Be careful, she said. Everybody wants something. She taught us what to expect, me and my sister. She tried to prepare us for going out into the world, for men, for making our own way. Sis couldn't do it. Oh, that's too bad. I could. I did. I met him at a party. He'd said he'd seen me before. He'd been married twice. First one was a whore, second one was a drunk. He was funny. He said, let's go riding in the park. I said, all right, scared to death. I lied. I said I rode. He didn't care. He wanted me. I could tell that. It only took six weeks. Oh, good girl. We had horses when we were married. We had saddle horses. We rode. Hoity toity. I learned to ride and I was very good. I'm sure. How are you sure? Shh. I rode side saddle and I rode astride and I drove ponies, hackneys, and I loved it all. Well, we, we, he would go with me and we would ride every morning and the, the Dalmatian would go with us. But what was her name? Susie, I think? No. Oh, we had good horses, and we showed them, and we won all the ribbons, and we kept them in a big case down in the... No, that was the other house. We kept them, and, and cups, oh, oh, all the silver cups we won, and balls and platters. We knew all the judges, but that's not why we were doing We won because we were the best. Of course you did. Be decent. Oh, I used to love it. She'll learn. Uh, riding in the morning. Going down to the station or to the stable in the station wagon and in my coat and jawed purse and derby and, and penny the, the Dalmatian, what was her name? To Susie, I think. No. Uh, so, sometimes he would go with me and sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes her husband. Mm -hmm. Did you ride when you were little? No. We were poor. Poor? Really poor? Well, no, not really poor. My father was an architect. He designed furniture. He made it. That's not an architect. Let it be. He made such beautiful furniture. He was an architect. Strict, but fair. No, no, that was my mother. No, no, they were both strict and fair. Oh. <laughs> now, now. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. What am I saying? You were talking about horses and how you used to ride and how you didn't ride when you were a little girl. Oh, you rode if you were a farmer or if you were rich. Or if you were a rich farmer. Shh. I didn't like sex much. But I had an affair. Oh? But, but what do you want? Oh, she doesn't want anything. No, but I bet you're going to. Oh. Off we go. Oh, oh go on. Go on. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I'll hold the fort, shall I? Necessary because I've already done it. Well, the princess and the pea, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened to her arm? She fell and broke it. It didn't heal. Mostly they don't at that age. They put pins in it, metal pins, but the bone just disintegrates around the pins and the arm just hangs there. They want to take it off. What? The arm. They want to take the arm off. She won't let them. Well, I shouldn't think so. Well, what do you know? She makes us go into the city once a week to see the guy, the surgeon, the one who said it, the one who wants to take the arm off. God, he's almost as slow as she is. <sighs> she makes us go in and she makes us 
look at it and x-ray it, and each time the pins are looser and the bone has gotten more. But she tells the old guy, the surgeon, that it's so much better, and she wants him to agree, but he just waffles and looks at me, and I'm no help. But she makes him promise to never take the arm off and won't let anyone else do it either. And he promises, assuming that she'll forget, probably, but she won't. There are some things that she never forgets. He promised! You were there! You heard him! I think she says that every other day. <laughs> he promised! You were there! You heard him!
they were hunting, and he was all, they were all hunting, and a gun went off and hit him in the arm. In the shoulder. My god. <laughs> they hit him in the shoulder, and they couldn't get all the bullet out, and he got infected, and his arm swelled up like a balloon, and they lanced it, and it burst, and there was pus all oh, over. Don't, please. And Why? What's it to you? And there weren't any antibiotics then, and they put drains on it, in it, and it wouldn't go away, and it would get worse, and everybody said he was going to die, but I wouldn't let him. I said, no, he is not going to die. I told that to the doctors, and I told that to him, too. And he said, all right, he would try if I would sleep with him, if I wouldn't leave him alone at night, be next to him. And I did, and it smelled so awful. The pus, the rocks, oh, just stop. And they said, take him to the desert. Bake his arm in the hot sun. And so we went. We went to Arizona, and he sat in the baking sun all day, his arm oozing and stinking and splitting, and in six months it went away. The arm went down in size and he was saved. Well, except for the scars. All the scars. And I learned to ride Western Saddle. My, my. Well, only it was outside of Phoenix, Camelback Mountain. We used to ride out into the desert. And the movie star was there, the, the one who married the young fellow who ran the studio. Uh, what was her name? She had eyes of a different color. She had what? She had eyes of a different color. One was blue or something, and the other was green, I think. Who was this? Oh, oh, she was a big star. She was tiny and had a very big head. Meryl Oberon? No, of course not. You know. How long ago was this? Claire Trevor. Oh, when, when I was there, when we were there. She, she was tiny. She had two eyes. In the 30s? No, no, no. Uh, or maybe. Oh, she, was, she had a son, too. She cooked an egg on the sidewalk. It was so hot. He told me. Oh, the chewing gum twins, that one. Her son told you? No, no, ours. He was a little boy there, too. Uh, he played with all the other children. The, yeah, the chewing gum twins. Uh, Thalbuk, that's who she married. Arnold Thalbuk, he was a real smart little Jew. All Jews are smart. Have you noticed? Uh, Irving, Irving Falber. I'm a Democrat. I notice a lot of things. Most of us are. Most of us do. It's fascinating, isn't it? Grizzly, but fascinating. She doesn't mean anything by it. And if she did once, she does it now. It sort of just falls out. Ooh. Norma Shearer! Who? Oh! <laughs> oh, Norma! <laughs> oh, what's the matter with all you people? We're Democrats. What? Well, you asked what the matter was. Don't you get fresh? Oh, God. I haven't heard that in a long time. Don't you get fresh? <laughs> My mother used to say that to me all the time. Don't you get fresh to sis and me. She made us eat everything she put before us and wash the dishes. She made us know what being a grown-up was. She was strict. Not fair. Well, no, that was my father. Oh, no, that was both of them. She made us be proper young ladies. And go to church twice a day and pray a lot? Uh, we went to church, but we didn't talk about it much. I suppose we took it for granted. How much did you steal? When? Whenever. Well, I waited until you were asleep. Well, I never sleep. Until you were pretending to be asleep. And I went to the silver closet, and I got down two big silver bowls, and I stuck them under my skirt, and I waddled out into the hallway. Joke about it if you want to, but... <laughs> you must have looked funny. <laughs> I'm sure I did. Waddling out like that, I bet you claimed, too. <laughs> What right do they have to 
die? No, no, to not be what they were. To change, you mean? Let her alone. Oh, no, right. They die, they go away. The Bradleys, the Fipsies, they change, and the family does. The, the family goes away. No, nobody should do this. Look at Sis. What about her? My sister was a drunk. She was smarter than me, no brighter, two years younger. Or five or seven. What? Never mind. She always got better grades, had more bows when we were growing up, only then. She missed more boats than you could shake a stick at. You never shook a stick at a boat before. Well, maybe you should give it a try. Shake it, not shook. Oh, we had a tiny little apartment. We came to the city together after she met, finished school. Mother and father came to see the, ap the apartment to be sure it was all right. Not, not dangerous, I suppose. It was furnished, but he didn't like it. He wanted us to have some of theirs, so he gave us some from the garage. Oh, he made such beautiful furniture. Well, we went out all the time looking for jobs, jobs a young lady could accept, being escorted out at night. Well, we were the same size, so we could wear each other's clothes. That saved money. We, we had a little allowance, but a very little one, nothing to spoil us. We had kept a list, so the boys, the, the young men, the men who took us out, we went out together with them a lot, <laughs> would know we were wearing each other's. No, no, I wore that at the plaza. Don't you remember? You better wear the beads. Oh, we had a regular list. We had big feet. What? They had big feet. We had big feet. I still do, I suppose. Uh, do I still have big feet? Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> well, I'd never know. I think we liked each other. We used to confide a lot and laugh, and Mother made us write twice a week, or call later. We tried sending letters together, one letter together, <coughs> and she made us send two, each of us one. Oh, they had to be newsy and long, and she would send them back with things like, that's not true, or don't abbreviate, or your sister said the same thing if she didn't like them, or spelling. Sis couldn't spell. She drank. Even then? Oh, when? What, when you first moved to the city. Oh, no, no, that was later. Well, we'd have champagne when we went out before the speakeasies. We'd drink champagne and nibble on candied orange rind. He, he brings me some sometimes. Or, or flowers, Frisia, when they're in season. It's the least he can do. And he knows it. Who is this? Shh, her son. We, we went out all the time, but we didn't take each other's boyfriends. She was. Prim. I liked wilder men, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you? Well, we never liked the same boys. Men. I don't think she liked men very much. I know she did sex anyway. We had to make her get married when she was almost 40, get someone for her. I don't think she wanted him. He was a wop. I don't believe it sometimes. Why? Wop, nigger, kike, I told you, it doesn't mean anything. It's how she learned things. Oh, yes, from these strict but fair parents. Well, I have mm, Jewish friends, and I have Irish friends, and I have uh, South American friends. Oh, I did. Not Puerto Rican or like that. But, but, but Venezuelan or oh, Cuban. <laughs> I never knew any colored. Well, well, help, yes. In Pinehurst, they had colored help, and we used to visit them there. They knew their place. They were polite, well-behaved. None of those uppity niggas, the city ones! Jesus Christ! Oh, he, he keeps telling me I can't say these things. He said once he wouldn't come to see me anymore if they kept saying these things. I don't know what things he means. Why, what did he mean? Oh, don't worry yourself. Your sister married an Italian? Oh, she did what? Oh, I was later. I always had my eye out for the right man. And she didn't? No. She always thought everything would fall into her lap, and it did a lot. I had to work for everything. Nothing came my way. I was tall and handsome. She was tall and pretty. Well, tall but shorter. Not as tall as I am. Was. It happens 
every day to oh. we're taller in the morning than we are at night. No! The spine compresses as the day goes on. Oh, I don't have a spine. I used to have a spine. I don't have one anymore. What does she mean? She means osteoporosis. But it hasn't happened to you yet. Just wait. The spine collapses. She could fracture it by walking, turning around, whatever. <laughs> He was short. A lot of my bows were tall, but he was short. Who is this? Her husband, I think. Oh, that was a long time ago. I knew such tall boys, such dancers. Sis and I would go out and we would dance all night with the tall boys. Some of them were show boys, or they were fairies. But, but some of them were regular. Oh, we would dance the night away. And Sometimes I'd go off. No, naughty girl. Well, I, I was the wild one. Sis would say to me, how can you do that? And she'd, and, I, and I'd laugh, and I'd say, oh, come on. I, I like to have a good time, but I have my eye out. I always have my eye out. I've always had to be on my toes. Them sneaking around, stealing and conniving. If I didn't have my eye out, we wouldn't have had anything. I've always had to be on my toes. Everybody's robbing me. Everybody's robbing me right and left. Including me? Do I rob you? Well, I don't know. How would I know? He says I should have more money. Doesn't your well, office... We deal with what comes in. There's more than one handles for money. There's plenty of opportunity, if anybody wanted to. But you use all of your income as far as I can see. Well, why not? It's mine. Well, just don't complain. If you wanted an increase in principle... Oh, I don't complain. I never complain. I have you, and I have her, and I have this place here, and I have the nurses, though, though they're black. Why is that? Well, I have all these things. I have the cook, I have the... I know. I know. They all steal, every one of them. Oh, well. Just didn't have her eye out. Not like I did. I married him. He was short. He had one eye. <laughs> he had a glass one. A golf ball hit him there. He had a glass one. They took it out. It was Last one there. <laughs> Which eye? Oh, come on! No, I want to know. Which eye? Which eye was glass? Which eye was... Three, three, and 
In he walks, naked as a jaybird. <laughs> he was funny when he wanted to be. We were naked a lot early on, pretty early on. Oh, oh I shouldn't tell this. Yes, 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 you should. Well, there I was at my table, and I had my big powder puff, and I was powdering myself. I, I knew it was there, but I wasn't paying any attention. I have something for you, he said. I have something for you. And I raised my eyes, and I looked in the mirror, and... Oh! <laughs> I, I can't tell this! I can't! Yes, yes, yes! No, 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 no. I could possibly! <laughs> wow. There he was, and his... His pee-pee was all hard, and, and hanging on it was a new bracelet. <laughs> oh my god! And it was on his pee-pee, and, and he came close, and it was the most beautiful bracelet I'd ever seen. It was oh, diamonds, and it was wide, so <laughs> wide. And, and he came closer, and, and I thought you might like it. He said, yes, yes, it's beautiful. I said, do you want it? Yes, yes, oh goodness, yes, I said. And he came closer, and his pee-pee touched my shoulder. He, he was short, and I was tall or something. And, and, and do you want it, he said, and, and he poked me with, with his, with his pee-pee. And, and I turned, and he had a little pee-pee. I, I shouldn't say that. That's terrible to say. But I know he had a little, you know. And, and there was a bracelet on it. And, and he moved closer to my face. And do you want it, he said. I thought you might like it. And, and I said, no, I can't do that. You know I can't do that. And, and I couldn't. I could never do that. And I said, no, I can't do that. And he stood there for I, I don't know how long. And, and his pee-pee, well, it, it started to go soft. And the bracelet slid off, and it fell into my lap. I was naked, deep into my lap. Keep it, he said. And he turned, walked out of my dressing room. Hi. It's Emily. The wild. It's Emily. Take me to bed. first making me unhappy being 
taller in my class, taller than the boys. I remember it. It comes and goes. I think they're all robbing me. I know they are, but I can't prove it. I, I think I know, and then I can't remember what I know. He never comes to see me. Yes, he does. When he has to, now and then. He's a good son, better than most. Well, I don't know about that. He brings me things. He brings me flowers, orchids, freesia, those big violets. African. He brings me those. And chocolate, orange rind in chocolate, that dark chocolate I like. But he doesn't love me. No. He doesn't. He loves his, those boys, those boys he has. You don't know. Oh, he doesn't love me, and I don't know if I love him. I can't remember. He loves you. I can't remember. I can't remember what I can't remember. Isn't that something? It certainly is. So much holding on. Fighting for everything, he wouldn't do it. I had to do everything. Tell him how handsome he was, clean up his blood. Everything came on me, just being that way. Hiding her bottles and her night things when she came to stay with us for a little. Falling, falling down the way she did. Mother coming to stay. Where else could she go? He said she could. Did we like each other even? The end? Not at the end. Not when she hated me. I'm helpless. She, she screamed, I hate you. She stank. Her room stank. She stank. I hate you. She screamed at me. I think they all hated me. Because I was strong. I had to be. He left home. He ran away because I was strong. I was tall and I was strong. I had to be. If I wasn't then
change. No, that's the way it goes. Yes, something to look forward to. No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. Let me alone. It's worth thinking about, even at your age. Let me alone. Has to be someone. Stroke, cancer, or as the lady said, heading into a mountain with a jet. No. How about walking off a curb into a 60 mile an hour Stop walk? Stop it! Or, even better, think of this. Home alone in the evening. Servants off. Him out at the club. The windows, Jimmy. They get in. Little cat feet and all. Find you sitting there in the upstairs sitting room. Stop it! Find me sitting there in the upstairs sitting room. Going over invitations or whatever. Bills. Come up behind me, slit my throat, me thinking, oh my god, my throat's being slit. If that, if there's time for that. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. Or I hear them, turn around, see them. How many are there? Two, three? Start falling apart, screaming, so they have to slit your throat, my throat? <laughs> Though they probably didn't plan it that way. All that blood on the Chinese rug. My, my. Chinese rug? Yes. Oh, yeah. Beige, with rose embroidery around the edges. We get it at auction. I wouldn't have to. No, of course not. You wouldn't. But you will, though. About the rug, I mean. Clearly nobody slits your throat, or mine for that matter. Mm -hmm. Might be better. I'll, I'll do a will. I'll do some paper that won't let me go on if I get like that. I tried. There weren't any. There aren't any. You can't get your way in this world. There must be. You have your way to everything and then you can at the last? There must be. There must be what? A living will. I meant to, but slipped my mind or I forgot. He kept saying, make one. He has one for himself, he says. Well, I forgot. Nothing much to do about it now. Any change? No, we're just as we were. No change. I wonder how long this will go on. I hope it's quick. What's her name took six years? Not a move, not a blink. Hooked up, breathed for, pissed for. Do I know her? No, um, after your time, so to speak. Mm. A lot of money. Mm. A lot. <laughs> the kids, ha, 50, the youngest. The kids disagreed. They wanted to see the will first. The lawyer wouldn't show it to them. They came down on both sides. Kill her off. Keep her going. Not pretty. Stop it. <laughs> Grow up. She will. She does. Well, yes, of course. And so do you. I will not become that. Oh, really? Come off it. I won't. And what do you plan to do about it? Oh, yes, that's interesting. <laughs> Nor will I become this. Ha! I won't. I know I won't. That's what I mean. That thing over there. I, I could never be like that. Nobody could. I I'm 26. I'm a good girl. My mother was strict, but fair. She still is. She loves me. She loves me and sis, and she wants the very best for us. We have a nice little apartment, sis and I, and at night we go out with our bows, and I do have my eye out for what? The man of my dreams. It's out of sis, I guess. I don't think I've been in love, but I've been loved by a couple of them. They just weren't the right ones. They never are. Mm. Mother taught us what the right one would be. We have fun with the others. Staying out late, dancing, seeing the sun up sometimes. Things get a little involved now and again, and that's fun too. Though, sis doesn't think so as much as I do. They get involved, but they never get very serious. Well, I have my eye out. Oh, and we do have our jobs. We're mannequins, fanciest shop in town. I don't want that no. Oh, stop, it was fun. <laughs> we go into work and we put on these lovely dresses and we parade we parade elegantly around the store among the ladies shopping sometimes with their men sometimes not and we stop 
and they touch our dresses, they feel the silk, the fabric, and they ask us questions, and then we pass on to another group, another section, we twirl, we sashay, we do. Oh, oh I know. Oh, yes, do we know. <laughs> oh, don't look at them. Don't listen to them. We, we wear our beautiful evening gowns, and we parade about, and we know there are people looking at us, studying us. And we smile and well. I suppose we flirt a little with the men who are doing it, the husbands or whatever. Flirt? You? Oh, me? Flirt? We? Oh, oh, bravo! Bravo! Oh, Stop it! Stay out of my life! Oh, my dear. Oh, I remember it a little differently. I remember more design. I remember a little calculation. Oh, yes, a little calculation, a little design. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to them. Design, what are they talking about? Never mind. <laughs> they don't know me. No. <laughs> remember me. No, no. <laughs> oh, all right, dear, go on. I said go on. She says go on. I am a good girl. Well, yes, I suppose so. And not dumb. I, I am a good girl. I, I know how to attract men. I'm tall. I'm striking. I know how to do it. Sis slouches and caves her front in. I stand tall, breasts out, chin up, hands, just. I walk along the aisles, and they know there's somebody there, that there's somebody coming. But I'm a good girl. I mean, I'm not a virgin, but I'm a good girl. And the boy who took me was a good boy. Oh, yes, he was. Yes, was he? You remember. Well, it was a while ago, but you do remember. Yes, I remember. He was sweet and handsome. No, not handsome. Beautiful. He was beautiful. Yes, he was. Yes. He has coal black hair and violet eyes and such a smile. Oh, yes. His body, well, it was thin but hard, all sinew and muscle. He fenced, he told me. He was the one with the megaphone. And when I held him when we danced, there was only sinew and muscle. We dated a lot. I liked him. I didn't tell mother, but I liked him a lot. I like him, sis, I said. I really like him. Have you told mother? No, I said. And don't you? I like him, but, but I don't know. Has he, you know? No, I said. No, he hasn't. But then he did. We were dancing slowly, late, the end of an evening, and we danced so close, all pressed, and, and we were pressed, and, and I could feel that he was hard, that muscle and sinew all pressed against me as we danced. We were the same height. And he looked into my eyes, and, and I could feel the pressure up against me, and, and he tensed it. And I felt it move against me. Whatever is that, I said. Mm. Whatever is that, I said. I mean, I knew, but whatever is that, I said. And he looked into my eyes, and it's me in love with you, he said. You have a very interesting way of showing it, I said. Appropriate, he said. And I felt the muscle move again, and I knew it was time. I, I knew I was ready. I knew I wanted him. Whatever that meant, that I wanted him, that I wanted it. Oh. Don't give it away, Mother said. Don't give it away like it was nothing. 
They won't respect you, and then you'll be known as a loose girl. Then who will you marry? Is that what she said? I can't remember. Yes, you can. They won't respect you for it, and you'll get known as a loose girl. Then who will you marry? But he was pressed against me exactly where he wanted to be. We were the same height, and he was so beautiful, and his eyes shone. He moved his hips as we danced, so slowly as we danced. He breathed on my neck, and he said, you don't want me to embarrass myself right here on the dance floor, do you? No, no, of course not. I said, no, no, of, of course not. Let's go to my place, he said. And I heard myself saying, I'm not that kind of girl. I mean, the minute I said it, I blushed. It was so stupid, so expected. Yes, you are, he said. You're that kind of girl. And I was, and oh, my god, it was wonderful. Mm. It hurt, didn't it? Well, a little. You're that kind of girl. And I guess I was. We did it a lot. I, I know it's trite to say your first time is your best, but he was wonderful, and I know I'm only 26, and, and there have been a few others. And I imagine I'll marry, and I'll be very happy. Well, we'll talk about happy sometime. I know I will be very happy. But will I ever not think about him? I mean, he was long, and he was thick, and he knew what I wanted, what I needed. And while I... I couldn't do what he wanted. God, I, I can't. I couldn't. Nope, never could. I wonder why. <laughs> I tried. I wanted to, but oh God, I choked and, and I threw up. I, I can't. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what can't be helped. And there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> I just want you to know that I'm a good girl. That I was a good girl. You meet him in two years. What? Who? Your husband. We're what, 26? You meet him in two years. The man of my dream. <laughs> well, a man you'll dream about. Oh, for a long, long time. Like the boy I was. Well, yes, he was wonderful, but then there's life. How long? Hmm? How long? Long enough. You're what? 52. I marry when I'm 28. You're 66 when he dies. We have him for a good long time. <coughs> Another 14 years. Yes, but the last six aren't much fun. It's almost 40 years with one man. <laughs> well... More or less, more or less oh. one man. Not much fun? No, not much. How is he? Have I met him? Who? The, the little one? The little one-eyed man? <laughs> oh, 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 now? <laughs> more or less, what is this more or less? Hmm? I beg your pardon? Uh, I said almost 40 years with one man. You said more or less, more or less one man. What are you expecting? Monogamy or something? Yes. If I care, yes. Well, remember monogamy? No. You can talk about monogamy if you like, pro and con if you like. Leave me out of that one. Infidelity is a matter of spirit. Isn't that what they say? Ah, aside from the bad taste, the disease, the confusion as to where you live, remembering the lies and making them up. Oh my god, remember the lies? Well, there wasn't much. Not, not too much. Except for the group. Oh my, the groom. <laughs> Why do I marry him? Who? The groom? <laughs> the one-eyed man. I marry the one-eyed man. Yes, you do. Why? Uh, why did I marry him? Why did I marry him? Mm, why did I? <laughs> Tell me. Uh, because he's funny and, and short and sort of like a penguin. <laughs> oh, yes, 
quite a bit like one. Well, oh, especially Miss Bibb and Tucker. <laughs> well, well, why would I marry him if I'm just gonna cheat on him? Well, why would you marry him if he's just going to cheat on you? Oh, God, I don't know! Oh, calm down. Adjust. Settle it. Men cheat. Men cheat a lot. Mm -hmm. We cheat, but we cheat less. We cheat because we're lonely. Men cheat because they're men. No. We cheat because we're bored. Sometimes. We, we cheat to get back. We cheat because we don't know any better. We cheat for lots of reasons. We cheat because we're whores. Men cheat for only one reason. As you say, because they're men. Tell me about him. Oh, don't you want to be surprised? No. Well, you've seen him, or he's seen you. He's somewhat of what they call a playboy. In my time, not yours. And he's rich, or his father is, and he's divorcing his second wife. She's just plain bad. The first one drank. Still does. That one dies eventually, 80 or something. Pickled. <laughs> Preserved. <laughs> what is he like? Well, he's short, and, and he has one eye. <laughs> oh, he's a great dancer. Except he keeps running into things. The eye, you know. <laughs> oh, and he has a lovely voice. A beautiful tenor. And, oh, God, is he funny. <laughs> yes, yes, he was. And he likes tall women. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> I, I have seen him. Oh, he tells me. I think I remember. He tells me he saw me with Sis before he dated her, that I was taller, <laughs> if you'll excuse the joke. He had his eye on me. <laughs> Did he ever tell you that? That he had his eye on us? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, he was going out with that comedian did the splits, the eight foot one. Well, you put a stop to that soon enough. Once you got your claws into him, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but why do I like him? I mean, is being funny enough? Is dancing, is having a voice enough? Oh. Don't forget what I! <laughs> oh, he was nice. We liked him a lot. Liked? Liked him a lot? Oh, stop it. You're 26 years old, which is not a tot. There's a future to look out for. And... No, and he is rich, or is going to be. Rich family. I don't believe this. Our father dies. I love him. No, he doesn't. Everybody does. Except me. Maybe. <laughs> Except us. I love him. Oh, well, good. That should be enough to keep the old heart going. Jesus, she loves me. How can I go and die on her? Is it quick? I don't remember. Not bad. Heart failure. Fluid in the lungs, bad breathing. Oh, God, the terror in his eyes. We did that. Yes. We cried when Dad died. I cried. Sis cried. Mom went out on the porch and did it there. I don't remember. What happens to Mom? She stays on alone. She holds out for almost 20 years. And then she moves in with us. How does it go? What? She becomes an enemy. She dies when she's 87, 14 years of it, of her up in her room in the big house with us, the colitis, the cigarettes, the six or seven Pekingese she goes through. I stopped liking her. I couldn't. She becomes an enemy. How? She comes to resent us. She comes to resent getting old, getting helpless. The eyes, the spine, the mind. She comes to resent that I have so much, that we have so much, that I'm being generous, that we're being generous. She snaps at everything. She sides with sis. She criticizes me. She wasn't like that. Forget I told you. She never moved in. She's still alive in the same house in the country. She's 137 now, does her own baking, jogs three times a week. All right, all right. 
There's more. You want to hear it? Of course not. Anyhow, you marry him. I do. And it goes all right. The mother doesn't like me, or doesn't like you, at all. But the old man does. Mm, he certainly does. <clears throat> you're tall. I bet you're hot stuff. You win him over. You know, I think the old buzzard had lunch for us. Oh, I think so. And boy, did he want a grandson. Oh, did that make him happy? I have children. <laughs> we have one. We have a boy. Yes, we do. I have a son. Well, fancy seeing you again. Get out of my house. Is that him? I said get out of my house! Do be quiet! Let him alone. He's come to see me. That's it. Do your duty. My goodness, how nice, how handsome. You wouldn't say that if you knew. Shh. She wouldn't, filthy little. Shh. I don't want to think about that. He came back. He never loved us, he never loved me, but he came back, let him alone. He's so young. Yes. This is how he looked when he went away. I'm leaving, he said. He took one bag and his life. He went away from me? Why? Maybe you changed. They say you did. I haven't noticed anything. He comes back to me? I, I let him. Sure. We have a heart attack. They tell him he comes back. Twenty plus years, that's long enough to sulk on both sides. He didn't come back when his father died. Of course not. But he came to me. They call me up. They say he's coming to see me. They say he'll call. He calls. I hear his voice and it all floods back. <coughs> but I'm for him. Why, hello there, I say. Why, hello there to you, he says. Nothing about this shouldn't have happened, nothing about I've missed you, not even that little lie. Sis is visiting. She's lying passed out drunk upstairs, and not even that little lie. I thought I'd come over. Yes, you do that. He comes. We look at each other. We both hold in whatever we've been holding in since the day he went away. You're looking well, he says. Yes, and so are you, I say. And there are no apologies, no recriminations, no tears, no hugs, dry lips on my dry cheeks. Yes, that. And we never discuss it, never go into why, never go beyond who we are. We're, we're strangers. We're Curious about each other, but we leave it at that. I'll never forgive him. No, I never do. But we play the game. We dine, mother and son going to formal places. We never reminisce. Eventually he lets me talk about when he was a little boy, but he never has much of an opinion on that. He never has much of an opinion on anything that has to do with us with me, never, or with you, or you. Did we drive him away? Did I change so? He left. He packed up his attitudes and he left. 
I never want to see him again. Go away! Well, yes you do, you see. You do want to see him again. Wait twenty years. Be alone except for her upstairs, passed out on the floor, and the piano top with the photos and the silver frames and the butler. And be all alone. You do want to see him again, but the terms are too hard. We let him come, but we never forgive him. We never forgive him. I bet you didn't know that, didn't, did you? How did we change? Don't bother yourself. He never belonged. I don't believe it. Let it alone. No. How did I change? What happened to me? Oh, God. She wants to know how she changed. She wants to know how she changed into me. <laughs> well, next she'll want to know how I changed into her. No, I'll want to know that. Maybe I'll want to know that. Ha! Huh. Maybe. You want to know how I changed? I don't know. Do I? 26 to 52. Double it. Double your pleasure. Double your fun. Try this. Try this on for size. They lie to you. You're growing up and they go out of their way to hedge, to qualify, to evade, to avoid, to lie. Never telling you how it is, how it's going to be when a half-truth could be gotten there. Never giving the alternatives to the pleasing prospects, the what you've got to look forward to. God, if they did that, the streets would be littered with adolescent corpses. Maybe it's better they don't. They? They? Parents, teachers, all the others, you lie to us. You don't tell us that things change, that Prince Charming has the morals of a sewer rat, and we're supposed to live with that and like it, or give the appearance of liking it, chasing the chambermaid into the closets, the kitchen maid into the root cellars, and God knows what goes on at the stag club. They probably nail the whores to the billiard tables for easy access. Nobody tells you any of this. So no wonder one day we come back from riding, with the horses all slathered, snorting, and he takes the reins, the groom does, and he helps us dismount, the groom does, his hand touching the back of our thigh, and we notice, and he notices we notice. And we remember having had noticed him earlier that day, bare chested, heaving the straw, those arms, that butt. And no wonder we smile in a way that he understands so quickly. And, and no wonder he leads us into the further stall, into the fucking hay, for God's sake. And down we go, and we do it for revenge and self pity, until we feel it turning into pleasure for its own sake, for our own sake. And we're dripping wet, and he rides us like we've seen in the pornos, and, and we actually scream. And as we lie there in the straw, which probably has shit on it, cooling down, he tells us he's wanted us a lot. He likes big women, but he wouldn't dare. <laughs> Would he get fired now? And I say, no, no. Of course he won't. And for about a month or more of it, I don't. But then I do. I do have him fired because it's dangerous not to. Because it's a good deal I've got with the penguin, a long-term deal despite the crap he pulls. And, and you better keep your nose clean or polished anyway for the real battles for the penguin's older lady folk, the real ones. The mother that just doesn't like you. Maybe in part because she senses the old man has lunch for us. And besides, no girl's good enough for the penguin. Not her penguin. The first two weren't, and this one's not going to be either. Try to stay on the good side of the whole wretched family. Stand up for your husband when he won't stand up for himself. And watch out for all the intrigue. 
Start really worrying about your sister who stopped worrying about herself. About anything. Watch your own mother begin to change even more than you're aware that you are. And then try to raise that. That gets himself thrown out of every school he can find, even one or two we haven't even sent him to. Since he hates you, catch him doing it with your niece-in-law and your nephew-in-law in the same week. Start reading the letters he's getting from, oh, how do they call it? Older friends, telling him how to outwit you, how to survive living with his awful family. Tell him you'll braid him with the fucking crystal ashtray if he doesn't stop getting letters. Just doesn't stop saying anything. Just doesn't stop. And he smiles and he says very quietly that he could have me thrown in jail for opening his mail. Not while you're a minor, I tell him. You just wait, I tell him. You just wait. I'll have you thrown out of this house so fast it'll make your head spin. You're going to fire me, he says, quietly smiling. You're going to fire me too, just like you fired him. He's good in bed, isn't he? Of course, you wouldn't know anything about bed, he says. He gets up, stops by me, touches my hair. I thought I saw some straw, he says. Sorry. And he walks out of the solarium, out of our house, out of our lives. He doesn't say goodbye to either of us. He says goodbye to mother upstairs. He says goodbye to the Pekingese too, I imagine. He packs one bag. And he leaves. Get out of my house! Does that tell you a little something about change? Does that tell you what you want to know? Yes. Thank you. You want some more? No, thank you. I shouldn't think so. Yes, you do. You want more. I said no. Thank you. Well, that doesn't cut any ice around here. How you get to her is one thing. How you get to me is another. How do you put it? That thing over there? Well, I'm sorry. Maybe. Yeah. I've got a few doubts about that route myself. You? Well, I'm not so bad. There's been shit, but there's been good times, too. Some of the best. Oh, of course. There are always good times. Like, like the time we break our back. You break your back? Yeah, you sure do. I do? Snap. Riding. Yes, jumping. Hunters. We never liked hunters. Saddle horses, yes. Hunters, no. Brutes, every one of them. Brutes are hysterics. But hunters, it was that day, entertaining some damn fools. Brisk, burned leaves in the air, smell of burning, just dawn. Mist on the ground, dawn all green and yellow. We didn't like our mount, did we? No. No. I didn't like her. She was a hysteric and a brute. I didn't trust her. I'd ridden her earlier that fall. She was stupid and cantankerous, shy in a moving shadow. You go on, I said. I'll stay. You go on. But he looked so hurt. All right, I said. And off we went into the wood, the green, the gold, the mist knee high to your to your knees. Stupid cow of a horse couldn't see the fence in the mist. Did she come on it too fast and shy like that? Over we went. Over we went. Oh, Could have broken my neck, I suppose. Lucky. Well, yes, there is that. We never mounted a hunter again, did we? No. 
damned cast weighed a ton. And you know what I thought about the most? Who's he with? Who's he got cornered in what corner, what hallway? Who's he sticking his little dick into? But he might leave us. But he might decide to get one isn't broken. What kind of man is this? Man, man. Man, man. How was this good times? Happy times, you said. Well, we proved we were human. Yes? Yes. Once you fall and they see it, once, whether you get up or not, once you fall, they know you can be pushed. Whether you're made of crockery and you smash into pieces, or you're bronze and you clang when you topple, it makes no never mind, it's the plinth is important. To translate, thank you. Thank you. To translate, you can go around patching everything, everyone up, and they're grateful to you. Grudgingly, but grateful. But once you fall yourself, prove that you're not any better than they are, than they thought. Then they'll let you go right on doing everything for them, fixing the world, etc. But they won't hate you quite so much. Because you're not perfect. And so everything's better. Nice and better. He doesn't leave you for something else. He's nice and gives you a big diamond ring. And you don't have to get back up on a hunter anymore. Doesn't that make it a good time? Do I get to shoot the horse? <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon? Oh, it never occurred to me. <laughs> oh, and the great ring, oh, the big diamond, you don't wear it anymore? Gone. Oh? I sold it. Oh. I've sold everything. Money doesn't go anywhere these days. I don't have any money. I, I have money, but I eat into it. Every year. <coughs> Every year it's less. We should cut back. We should. Oh, don't talk to me about cutting back. It's all fake. It's all paste. All the jewelry and the vault and the bank, it's all fake. Well, why is it there? Why do you... Why do we bother? Because we take the fake jewelry out and we wear it. It looks the same as the real. It feels the same. <laughs> why should anybody know our business? Yes? Well, who are we trying to impress? Ourselves. You'll learn. I take the big diamond in when we bought it, when he brought it to us. I take it in, and they look at it, and they say, It's a perfect stone. I've never seen a better one. If you ever want to sell it, bring it back to me, and I'll give you better than you paid for. <laughs> and he patted my hand. Pat, pat. And so I took it in. After he died, after the cancer after all that. I took it in. They looked at it and they said it was deeply flawed. Or it was cloudy or something. Sons of bitches. They offered me a third of what he paid for it and the dollar wasn't worth half of what it had been. Well, didn't you sue? I mean, what can we do? We can't... Oh, what can you do? You go on. You eat into yourself. Starving people absorb their own bodies. The money's there, the investments are there, except less each year. It's all you've planned to count on, isn't it? The extras? The big diamond, eh? The big diamond. And most of the rest. Well, what does it matter? It's all glitter. No. It's more than that. It, it's tangible proof that we're valuable, that we're valued. Well, it's all gone. Oh, the glitter's gone. Yep. Bye. What? Are there any other surprises? Oh, sure. Lots. Oh, my dear, you have no idea. She hides the money. What she gets for the jewelry, she keeps in cash and spends a little where there isn't enough on the regular. There's a lot. She can't spend it all without them knowing what she's doing, I mean. So she hides it. And then eventually she can't remember where she's hid it. And then she can't find it. Ever. And she can't tell anybody. Is the cancer bad? When is it good? How bad? Fill me in! Fill me in! Pretty terrible! Six years. I told you that. It takes six years from when they tell them. 
when he knows to when he goes. Prostate spreads to the blood, spreads to the bone, to the brain, and to the liver. Of course, everything does. The ancients knew something. It's all right at first, except for the depression and the fear. It's all right at first, and then the pain comes, slowly growing. And then the day he screams from the bathroom, I rush in, I expect to see him lying there, but no, he's standing at the toilet, his face filled with horror, and he points to the ball, and it's all pink in there. That the blood is coming with the urine now. It's downhill from there. The pink becomes red, and then there's blood in the bed at night while I'm lying with him, holding him. And then, no, why go on with it? It's terrible, and there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself. I don't like you. You deserve it. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't like you either. I had a premonition. I know you say there's no such thing, but I had one. It was I died. What? You don't think I'm going to? You can hardly... Wait. Just you wait. I died, you see, and when I did it, when I died, I was all alone. No one there in the room with me. The hospital. I was back in that awful hospital. Why did you leave me there? Why didn't you take me out of that? Don't you touch me! There I was, and I was in a coma, in and out, in and out. Sometimes I'd wake up and wonder who I was, and where I was, and who were all these people looking at me. Sometimes I wouldn't wake up. Not all the way, and I'd half try, and then I wouldn't. You brought me flowers. You brought me Frisia. You know I love Frisia. That's why you bring them to me, because I love them. Why do you do that? You hate me. Why do you do that? Do you want something? What do you want? You want something? Well, just do it. You'll get what's coming to you. In my premonition, I knew I was dead, and it didn't seem to matter any. I was all alone. No one there with me, just the chauffeur and the maid. I was there an hour, and I was dead, and then you came in. And you had your flowers. Your Frisia. You came into the room and they were there and I was dead and you knew right, of, right away and you stopped at the door of the room and you stopped and you thought. I watched you think. And your face didn't change. Why didn't your face ever change? And there you were, and you stopped, and you decided, and you came over to my bed, and you touched my hand, and you bent down, and you kissed me on the forehead. For them. They were there, and they were watching, and you kissed me for them! And then you stood up, still holding onto my hand as if, what? You didn't know what to do with it. You held on to my hand, and my hand wasn't warm anymore, was it? My hand was cold, wasn't it? Wasn't it?
I deny you. Oh, you deny me? You all deny me? You deny me? I suppose you do too. Yes, of course. And of course you deny me. Well, that's all right. I deny you too. I deny you all. I deny you. And I deny you, and of course I deny you! I'm here, and I deny you all. I deny every one of you. Is it like this? What about the happy times? The happiest moments? I haven't had them yet, have I? What? All done at 26? I, I can't imagine that. I've had some, of course, some of which will probably be the happiest. Like confirmation, for example. That wonderful time. The white dress mother made, sis all jealous and excited, jumping up and down and sulking at the same time. But even now, I'm remembering. But what I remember doesn't have to do with what I felt, but what I remember. They say you can't remember pain. And, and maybe you can't remember pleasure either, in the same way you can't remember pain. Maybe all you can remember is the memory of it. Remembering, remembering it? I, I know, my best times, what is it, happiest? Haven't happened yet. They're to come, aren't they? Please? And whatever evil comes, whatever loss and taking away comes, won't it all be balanced out? Please? I am not a fool. But there is a lot of happiness along the way, isn't there? And isn't it always ahead? I mean, aren't I right? I mean, all along the way? No? time? This must be the happiest time. Half of being an adult done, the rest ahead of me. Old enough to be a little wise, past being really dumb. No offense. None taken. Enough shit gone through to have a sense of the shit that's ahead, but well past sitting around and playing in it. This has to be the happiest time. In theory, anyways, oh, things nibble away at you. Your job is to know that, too. The wood may be rotten under your feet, your nicely spread legs, and you'll be up to your ass in sawdust and draw, dry rot before you know, before you can say that this is the happiest time. Well, I can live with that, die with that. These things happen. But what I like most about where I am, and 50 is a peak in the sense of a mountain, standing up here, right on top of the middle of it, has to be the happiest time. I mean, it's the only time you have a 360 degree view. See in all directions. Wow. What a view. You're both such children. The happiest moment Really, the happiest moment? Coming to the end of it, I think. When all the waves cause the greatest woes to subside, leaving breathing space. Time to concentrate on that greatest woe of all, that blessed one. The end of it. 
going through the whole thing and coming out, not beyond it, but sort of to one side. <laughs> None of that further shore nonsense, but to the point where you can think about yourself in the third person without being crazy. I've waked up in the morning and I've thought, well now, she's waking up. And now she's going to see what works. The eyes, for example. Can she see? She can. Well, good, so much for that. And now she's going to test all the other stuff, the joints, the inside of the mouth. And now she's going to have to pee. What's she going to do? Go for the walker? Lurch from chair to chair, pillar to post? Is she going to call for somebody? Anybody? The tiniest thought that there might be nobody there? That maybe she's not making a sound? That maybe she's not alive, so has anybody noticed? I can do that. I can think about myself that way, which means, I suppose, that that's the way I'm living. Beside myself, to one side. <laughs> Is that what they mean by that? I'm beside myself? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think they're talking about a different kind of joy. There's a difference between knowing you're going to die and knowing you're going to die. The second one's better. It moves away from the theoretical. I, I'm rambling, aren't I? A little. Well, we do that at 90 or whatever I'm supposed to be. I mean, give a girl a break. When I wake up and I start thinking about myself that way, like, like I was watching, I really get the feeling that I, I am dead. But going on at the same time, and then I, I wonder if she can talk and fear, and then, then I wonder which one of us has died. Me, or the one I think about. It's fairly confusing business. I'm rambling, I know. I was talking about what? Coming to the end of it. Thank you. 